of assurance. Let us pray together. We pray for forgiveness this day, for choosing power over service, forgive us. For seeking glory rather than humanity, forgive us. For pushing ourselves to the front when our presence is needed on the sidelines, forgive us. Help us to know where we are needed and how best to serve you and your people. Guide us to your side that we might be your hands of healing and compassion for a world in need. In Christ's name we pray. I invite you to hear now these words of assurance. Our God deals gently with those who stumble, who lose their way, and who get dazzled by wanting power and glory. That is good news for us. We are forgiven and graced with new life. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God. Hello? Yeah, All right. <laughs> yeah, it's a different microphone today. Um, well, welcome everyone. I'm Sandra Monahan. I'm your traditional worship lay leader. Um, if you are new here, I would love to um, invite you to fill out a green card and put it in our offering plate today so we can connect with you this week. And if any of you have any questions about ways to get involved here at Crozet UMC, please feel free to reach out to me anytime and I'll be at the back of the um, sanctuary after the service. Now, um, at this time, you're invited to stand, and if you're at your level of comfort, share the peace of Christ with one another. And as you do stand now and greet one another, as you do, we invite any children who are present this morning to join Pastor Christy here at the front for the children's message. Now may we pass the peace of Christ to one another. Thank you. you're up here because I know you go to school here and I wondered if you have um, people in your classroom at school who sometimes have different jobs. Do you have different jobs in your classroom at school? Oh, okay. You have a new friend. That's great. That's, that's important. Um, yeah, yeah. Sometimes in our classrooms, though, we each get to have um, a different job. Um, sometimes we're in charge of wiping up the tables when there's a mess, right? Yeah. And sometimes we get to be the line leader, right? Do you get to be the line leader sometimes? Okay. Um, and sometimes, well actually I have a story to tell you about this girl who was in second grade and in her second grade classroom they had a job, it was called the classroom helper. And the classroom helper got to do all the things for a whole week. So she got to lead the line, and she got to help clean the tables, and this was the part she loved the best. If the, if the classroom was a little too rowdy, she could raise her hand, and whenever the, the classroom helper raised their hands, what do you think it meant? No, not the line leader. Good, good, good guess though. It, mean, it meant that everybody else had to be quiet. So this person had a lot of power, right? So if they felt like things were getting out of control, they could raise their hand and the whole classroom would have to become silent. So she really liked that job, right? 
So then, guess what? The teacher was going to be gone for three weeks. And they were supposed to rotate who was going to be the classroom helper every week. But do you know what she did? She told the teacher, she somehow convinced the teacher to let her be the classroom helper for all three weeks. She thought she was something else. Raised her hand, the whole class got quiet. Lots of power. She got to be the line leader. She loved it. But you know what? When the teacher came back, she was not very pleased with this person. Do you know why? Because she was being a little selfish. She wanted all the power to herself instead of letting other people have a chance to be a leader. And so that's kind of what Jesus is teaching us today in our story from the Bible. And Jesus is telling us that it's not important for us to be the first all the time. In fact, it's more important for us to be the last and to help other people get a chance to lead too. I see that. I'm glad you brought it with you today. So I hope that you will um, think about this week. If you get to be the line leader, maybe we could let somebody else be the line leader instead. That would be practicing um, letting others be first and us being last. And I think it's something that we can all practice as well. So I invite you all to join me together in our prayer. If you'll put your praying hands together and you can repeat after me. Dear God, Dear God, thank you for Jesus. Thank you for Jesus. Help us to follow him. Help us to follow him. Serving others. Serving others. In his name we pray. In his name we pray. Amen. Amen. Very good. Thank you for coming up and you can go back to your seat now. And now I invite you to um, as I say to the preschoolers, opening open your listening ears and hear now the Ministry of Music shared by our chancel choir. Oh. 
Now as we prepare to hear God's word, I invite you to join with me in our unison prayer for illumination. Let us pray together. God of mercy and justice, we pray that your light would pour over these old, old words, that they would dance with newness in our hearts and minds, that we would be radiant in reflecting your word in our living and in our serving. Amen. This morning, our scripture is from the Gospel of Mark, chapter 10, verses 35 through 45, and I invite you to hear now these words. James and John, the sons of Zebedee, came forward to him, Jesus, and said to him, Teacher, we want you to do for us whatever we ask of you. And he said to them, What is it you want me to do for you? And they said to him, Grant us to sit, one at your right hand and one at your left, in your glory. But Jesus said to them, You do not know what you are asking. Are you able to drink the cup that I drink, or be baptized with the baptism that I am baptized with? They replied, We are able. Then Jesus said to them, The cup that I drink, you will drink. And with the baptism, baptism with which I am baptized, you will be baptized. But to sit at my right hand or at my left is not mine to grant. But it is for those for whom it has been prepared. When the ten heard this, they began to be angry with James and John. So Jesus called them and said to them, you know that among the Gentiles, those whom they recognize as their rulers, lord it over them, and their great ones are tyrants over them. But it is not so among you. But whoever wishes to become great among you must be your servant. And whoever wishes to be first among you must be slave of all. For the Son of Man came not to be served, but to serve, and to give his life a ransom for many. Friends, this is the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, the word of God for the people of God. Thanks, Thanks be God. to God. So I want to begin and give credit where credit is due. Today's sermon is loosely based on a sermon by a Lutheran pastor, James Lawrence, out of North Carolina. Sometimes we preachers recognize when others say it better than we can. And so we share gratefully and we give, um, you know, we acknowledge our sources and we give gratitude for that. So um, today we are continuing here at Crozet to walk with Jesus. And today he encounters some disciples who pose the question, how does one become great? When thinking about greatness, there are a number of celebrities that come to mind. Some of us might remember the great hockey player, Wayne Gretzky, raise your hand, yes, yeah. okay, yep. <laughs> Uh, um, he is also <laughs> sometimes called the great one. Uh, um, others have been called that too. Baseball player Roberto Clemente, uh, the comedian Jackie Gleason. Um, nowadays, though, it's rather trendy to call great athletes like Simone Biles what? The GOAT. The GOAT. The goat. The goat. The goat. Acronym for greatest of all time. But... What does it mean to be great in God's eyes? That is the question for us today. Um, today's reading begins with those two disciples of Jesus grasping for greatness as they understand it. There's James and there's John, and they want to sit at Jesus' right hand and left hand when he goes to glory. And they want to be great in the kingdom of heaven. But they clearly don't really know what it means to be great in the eyes of God. Jesus, though, of course, he does. He offers them a path 
to greatness, but it's a very different path than the one that they had in mind. He calls the disciples together, and he says to them, whoever wishes to be great among you must be a servant. And whoever wishes to be first among you must be slave of all. For the Son of God, for the Son of Man came not to be served, but to serve. And he gave his life as ransom for many. Serving others, that's what Jesus tells us, is the path to true greatness. And Jesus offers his own life as a model of how to become great through serving. Now, Jesus is not really given the name the Great One or Goat, but he does something quite radical in this particular text. He kind of turns our human thoughts on their head. He redefines greatness for everyone. He tells his followers that the path of true greatness lies in service. And he not only teaches us this, but he models it saying the Son of Man came not to be served, but to serve. Now, when we think about the broad span of Jesus' short life, um, it is marked over and over and over again, not by worldly greatness, but by humility. God's Son could have been born anywhere on earth, but he was born in a small town of Bethlehem. He was laid in a bed, a feeding trough, a bed that was a free feeding trough for animals because there was no room for him and his family in the inn. Jesus goes on and he grows up in this unimportant town called Nazareth. And even one of his future disciples, he asks, can anything good come out of Nazareth? Now Jesus was not trained to be a religious teacher. He didn't go to seminary. Neither did his disciples, for that matter. He was the son of a carpenter, and he was being trained to become a carpenter. He spent the first 30 years of his life pretty much unnoticed by anyone. Even when he began his public ministry, he went about the countryside of Israel, not seeking greatness but serving, teaching, preaching. And after three years, it was then that he went to Jerusalem, not to be received as a great king, but to be handed over to death. He washed his disciples' feet. He allowed himself to be arrested, tortured, humiliated on the cross, and he died a shameful death. Why did he do all of this? Because the Son of Man came not to be served, but to serve and to give his life for us. Jesus' life um, is, is great in the eyes of God, but not so much for the world. The world has always had a different idea of greatness. And so did Jesus' own disciples, as we see in this morning's text. He invites us, his followers, to do the same, to learn what it means to be great in God's eyes, to serve others, to spend our lives seeking out opportunities to give others what Jesus has given us. This seems so countercultural in our world today. When we look around, clearly the more popular choice is to be served. Mm -hmm. Think about vacation destinations. They don't try to lure us by inviting us to come, okay, Mary Alice, this excludes you, to come and cook their own meals. (laughs) Uh, um, They don't invite us to come and clean our own rooms. Most restaurants don't try to attract customers by telling them that they can come and they can eat and they can then wash the dishes afterwards. That's not how it works. In the eyes of the world, the path to greatness clearly lies in being served in more and more ways. We think that we can be assured that we have really made it when we spend our lives being 
served by others. But even for great people, for people who achieve that goal, they are often left with emptiness in their lives. Being served by others may make us uncomfortable, but it doesn't, it may make us comfortable, but it doesn't always make us happy, does it? Albert Schweitzer was 30 years old when he abruptly decided to change the course of his life, and he became a mission doctor. He abandoned a promising career, he had gone to medical school, and he had already become a doctor, so things were working out well for him. And then he headed to Africa to become a medical missionary. He eventually built a hospital in a leper colony, in a leper colony and in 1952, he was awarded the Nobel Peace Prize for his efforts of serving others. What is striking about Schweitzer, more than his many, many accomplishments, is that he discovered the secret to true greatness, that we are called not to be served, but to serve others. And that when we live with this desire in our hearts and in our souls to serve others, that is where we find true happiness and meaning and fulfillment that we cannot get anywhere else. Albert Schweitzer summed this up in his famous quote that says, every person I know who has been truly happy has learned how to serve others in some way. Those who are truly happy are not spending their lives lying on a beach somewhere having people bring their food and drinks to them, as much as we might dream of that. Those who are truly happy and who have found a meaningful life have learned to serve others. So when you think about it, many, I no, all of our ministries here, our ministry opportunities at this church, give us the chance to practice and learn this lesson. Just yesterday, as I mentioned, we were able to serve others around the globe, around the world, y'all, by combating world hunger. We packaged 10,000 meals. Serving others makes God happy. It is what Jesus teaches us, and it is essential to being a faithful disciple of Jesus Christ. Amen. Serving others can make us happy because we discover that life is not all about us and about our happiness and about our comfort. Everyone who has been truly happy has learned to make a difference in the lives of others. When we think about those great people like Gretzky and Simone Biles, it seems as if us regular folks, like you and me, we might never really achieve that kind of greatness. But when we walk with Jesus, friends, in an attitude of service, we will be great. Everybody will be great in God's eyes. Every body can serve. We had all ages there yesterday, and every person made a difference. We only need to have that heart of service and grace in our souls. And some of the greatest people this world has ever seen had have, little, ha, have had little more than that, a heart full of grace and a soul generated by love. And like those folks, we too can find a way to serve others, to devote our lives to serving others. Following the example of Jesus, looking for opportunities to give others what Jesus has given all of us, we will become truly great in the eyes of God. Again, the Son of Man came not to be served, but to serve. And he invites us to do the same. May it be so by the grace of God. Amen. Amen. 
This morning, as we respond to God's word, I invite you to stand as you are able and let us join our voices in this morning's litany of response. Please stand. James and John came to Jesus and asked, We want you to do something for us. Jesus responded, I will do it if I can. We want places of honor in your kingdom. Do you understand what you are asking? You will have to go through the same trials that I am about to endure. Yes, we can. However, God alone will choose who sits at these places of honor. The other disciples became angry when they heard about this conversation. Jesus reminded them, whoever wants to be great must become servant. Whoever wants to be first among you must be your slave. Jesus, help us become the servants you have called us to be. seated. As we go to God in our prayers for the people this morning, um, let us remember David, who is in Portugal. Um, Actually, I think I heard this morning he's moved on to Spain, traveling the Camino de Santiago. We also remember Joanne, whose mom is in the hospital with pneumonia. And we celebrate with Selma, who turned 94 this past week. So let us now go to God in prayer. Servant God, you are our creator. With ultimate influence and status, and you refused to pull rank and parade your power among us. Instead, you chose to step down into our experience, living among us, as one of us, with all the struggling and suffering that goes with being human. More than that, you adopted the role of slave, washing feet, serving people of no reputation or social standing, giving of yourself completely. As incredible as it sounds, you are the God who serves, and we can respond in no other way than to give ourselves to you in that same kind of service. But often, O God, we are so competitive we want to know who will be best and first, and we want and we hope that it is each one of us. You call us special, and we interpret that to mean the best. Sometimes we feel that we are entitled to do all that is due to the best. Jesus reminded us that the best are the servants, those who are willing to help others, to witness to others, not for their own honor, but for God's honor and praise. For far too long, we have decided that we know what is best for the world. We want to run the whole show, but we don't want to listen to you, O God. But you, you want to bring peace. You want us to listen to the needs of others and their wants and desires. We want to impose our own wills. Sometimes we have gotten off track. Bring us back, patient God. Shake the dust from us and nourish us with humility and with the joy that comes from truly serving as you serve. Help us to be the kind of disciples who serve you faithfully. 
And as Jesus prayed, so now let us pray together as he taught us, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. As we come now to the time in worship when we offer our tithes and gifts, I'd like to share ways that your giving makes a difference. Um, over the past few months, while you're looking forward to Thanksgiving and Christmas, we are already planning out uh, for worship into 2025. That means we've already ordered our 2025 calendars and our worship planners um, so that we can be prepared um, for, the, for the coming year of, ahead. Um, along those kinds of expenses, we budget about $2,000 a year. And so that is just one tiny way that your giving helps support the ministries here so that we can do the work of God at Crozet United Methodist Church. And so as the ushers come forward, I invite you to give back a portion of what God has given to you. I invite the ushers to come forward. Gracious God, we give you thanks for the many ways that you have blessed us. As we give these gifts back to you, we ask your blessing on them. Magnify them. Help us to use them in service to you so that we might model your service to the world. Let us be your hands and feet in this world today. In your name we pray. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. This morning, we come to the time in worship when we um, commission our impact ministry team. Um, you may or may not be aware that Crozet United Methodist Church has our own social justice ministry. That is, um, it, it is, it is. Uh, incorporates folks that are called to justice ministry, to go out and stand for those who cannot stand for themselves, to go out to the margins, to go to the edges, and to help make changes in our community um, for the betterment of all of us. And so you see these names here today. Um, I will also say we have a few folks visiting from the Wesley Foundation at UVA. You may or may not be a part of Impact Ministry, but I 
I know that there is an impact ministry there. And so I invite anyone who is involved with impact to stand at this time so that I might bless you with a prayer as you um, continue this ministry into the week ahead, into the year ahead. Please stand. I know you're out there. <laughs> Let us pray. Gracious God, we give you thanks for these persons who have responded your, to your call to stand in the gap, to support those who need our support the most. We ask your blessing on all of us and on the ministry that is before us so that we might go into Charlottesville and into Albemarle County and to make change for good. We ask that you might lead us and guide us and fill us with your courage and your strength. This we pray in your son's name, Jesus the Christ. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. And at this time, Bart Isley is coming forward with some announcements. <laughs> All right. Can you hear me? Yeah. Oh, awesome. Okay. So uh, let's start with fall walking group uh, in conjunction with our new worship series, Walking with Jesus. We're conducting a fall walking group. You're invited to join Pastor Christy and our lay leaders, Sandra Monahan and Joanne McDaniel, for a fun opportunity to connect with one another and our community and get in our exercise at the same time. Join us at the church at 730 a.m. and or 6 p.m. on Tuesdays, October 22nd and 29th. We'll take a casual 30 minute walk and enjoy the fall leaves and brisk temperatures. Uh, as I said last week, I wouldn't be at walking group, but I heard it was great. So, it's awesome. Uh, charge conference uh, is now set. The district superintendent has scheduled our 2024 charge conference for 4 p.m. Sunday, October 27th at Aldersgate UMC. UMC defines a charge conference as the basic governing body of each United Methodist local church and directs the work of the church and gives general oversight to the church council. In years past, a charge conference focused on an individual church However, with our district superintendent supervising over 100 churches, this conference will focus on churches in the Charlottesville area. The charge conference is open to all. For more information, contact Doug Gaskell at church council at crozetunitedmethodist.com. There's no slide for it, but middle school and high school youth tonight, uh, middle school at 4.30, high school at 5.30. Um, love to have anybody out for that. Um, as we talked about last week, We've entered a critical portion of the year for the church's giving. We're asking you to join us to restore and renew through giving this fall. After last week's giving, we now need $157,229 for planned ministerial expenses through the end of the year. Facilities, projects we've already undertaken, as well as current and future transition expenses. Take a look at our uh, progress, and you can keep track of it on the tracker, which I'm still super proud of. Um, and... Thank you so much for your consideration and continued support of Crozet UMC. That giving fuels incredible events like the one we held yesterday. More than 50 volunteers came together at Crozet UMC Saturday morning in partnership with Rise Against Hunger to pack 10,368 meals for Rise Against Hunger in two hours and 18 minutes. Yeah, that's awesome. Let's clap again for that. We know you. So thank you to all the volunteers that packed meals or organized or set up the fellowship hall. Thank you to everyone who came together to give more than $8,000 to help alleviate global hunger. Here's a slideshow.
Let's clap again. Those hairnets are everything we thought they would be. Um, <laughs> amazing. Uh, that's, those are pictures that we're going to hold on for a long time. Right, Jamie. Um, so uh, our last hymn is All Praise to Thee. seeking to be served, but to serve, as Jesus came to serve each of us. Go forth in the name of God, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen.